until your spirit fills this place And come down Pour out until we're covered in your grace These broken hands are lifted high This grateful heart is yours, not mine Be my desire And be my relentless love Your holy fire Come burn this city up Our generation sings your praise All of creation shouts your name Be my desire Everybody, uh, this is Josh from Crossroad Ministries with Sean Lee. Hey. Uh, where are you from, Sean? I'm from Springfield, Missouri. Oh, so you're the same place as? Same place as the Radiance Effect. Awesome. Yeah. So how'd you meet them? or? Well, that I actually them? taught each of them how to play all of their instruments. <laughs> 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 no, um, you know, growing up in the same hometown, I mean, Springfield is a pretty small town, and uh, it used to have a music scene. It's kind of been dying over the last few years, but, you know, so you kind of network with other musicians, and so like when we were in high school, we, you know, played a lot of the same places together, and uh, both went out on our first tour. I used to have a rock and roll band, um, also, called, well, it doesn't matter, but, um, but, uh, That's we, actually the name of it. we, uh, <laughs> it's not the name of it, we, uh, we actually went out together the first time, uh, for the first time when we went out on our very first independent tours, um, and, uh, yeah, so I've just known these guys for a long time. Got a lot of skeletons in that closet. <laughs> like that. So, uh, how long ago was that tour? Oh man, that was what four years ago? Three, three, three years ago. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, if I remember correctly, earlier tonight I was talking to you, and you had mentioned that you actually were in Africa. Yes. Is that right? Yeah, three different times this year, um, which was a blessing. Well, I guess technically now it's January of <laughs> So three different times in in 2010. Uh, uh, yeah, I had the honor and pleasure of going to Mali, uh, West Africa, Team Sub-Saharan Desert. From there I went to Sierra Leone um, to hang out with some awesome orphans, and then most of the time I've spent in Africa has been in a place called Kibera, which is one of the largest slums in the world, and it's in Nairobi, Kenya. And it's an awesome program going on there called uh, the Kibera Pinda Project. You can check it out online, kiberapindaproject.com. Awesome. And uh, I noticed that uh, you were selling some shirts mm -hmm. tonight. Yeah, sure. And wh awesome. what's the story behind that? Well, um, you know, just trying to figure out a way to you know, just help spur awareness and, and raise money for the kids at the same time. One of the cool things about the Pinda Project is that 100% of all, all the money raised, all the funds raised, is going directly to the kids. It's not a large organization and nobody's, nobody's making a living off of it, you know. Um, it's a very small grassroots thing, so. Um, so we just sell t-shirts at the shows and it starts a conversation and I get to tell people about it and help um, some of the poorest but most beautiful kids in the world make it through school and get a new start in life. Awesome. So, when you were over in Africa, was there cer has there ever been like a certain thing that has just stuck out to you uh, all the time that you've been over there? Well, it really changes your perspective on what what you really have. You know, I think as Americans, we grow up. Um, you know, and we have we have our own what we see relative as as you know poor or lower class or middle class or upper class and. You go to any other country in the world, and, and I don't think you can really understand um, what your culture is until you step outside of it, you know. And so, um, you go somewhere like like Africa, and you start to realize not only how much we've been blessed with as as, uh, as Americans, but but also how much how much we can do and how much we can give, and also uh, how happy and fulfilled people can live without all the stuff and the distractions and, and the things that we think are so important, you know. Um, there's a lot of people who live a lot more fulfilled lives and they have a lot less than we do. Um, so, I'd say that's probably what sticks out to me most about it. Awesome. Well, I have to admit, you did a wonderful yeah. job tonight. Thank and uh, I'm pretty sure everybody loves him. And uh, in my opinion, he's better than uh, a lot of artists out there. Oh, thank you. And uh, just like natural talent there. And thank so, you. Appreciate that. Great job, and uh, keep on in the ministry. Yeah. And uh, when did you start singing or pick up a guitar? Well, I picked up a guitar when I was uh, nine years old. 
I was in third grade, and it was mostly just because I wasn't good at anything else. Um, I'm, I'm hardly dyslexic, um, so I'm not stupid. I'm just not real good at school. Uh, and so that wasn't my thing, and uh, wasn't great at sports, and wasn't great at a lot of things. So you gotta, you gotta get the third grade lady somehow. So I picked up a guitar, um, and uh, uh, it was, it was probably the first thing that I just had kind of a natural knack for. Um, and when I was about 14, I started leading worship and writing songs, and just really felt called into full-time ministry. I, I knew that God was telling me, "This is what, this is what you're gonna do." Um, and it was, it was pretty awesome experience and uh, just started playing out and uh, recorded my first full-length record when I was uh, uh, 16. So, awesome. Been since then. awesome. And uh, I noticed one thing tonight at the show, uh, you actually broke out a neck harmonica then. Yeah. yeah. When did you pick that up? Oh man, I, I just randomly picked that up probably not even a year ago. I really don't know how to play harmonica. Uh, it's just, I've got people fooled, I guess. Uh, it's a pretty easy it's instrument. The, it's the neck break. Exactly. It's kind of like kazoo, you know? You just gotta make noise into it and uh, keep your fingers crossed that it sounds alright coming out. So, yeah. But I love it. It's fun. I, you know, I grew up in the Ozarks and so, um, uh, as, as long as I've been playing rock and roll, I mean, folk is really just kind of in, in, the, in the roots of who I am as a musician and a person. I grew up listening to CCR and Eagles and stuff like that. So it's just kind of, kind of part of my personality and I suppressed it for a long time because uh, it wasn't cool, and finally I just gave up, and I was like, whatever, I'm just going to be myself, so, um, yeah. Awesome. And uh, where can people check you out online? Uh, well, I have a website, just seanlee.com, but my name is spelled kind of weird. It's S-E-A-N-L-E-A, -E -E which is the right way to spell it. And uh, uh, seanlee.com, and that's got links to my Facebook and my Twitter. You can check me out on Facebook and Twitter and uh, MySpace and Pure Volume and anywhere else that's social networky. Probably fine so iTunes if you're into that thing so. awesome and uh, just a couple last questions is yeah. uh, for you yourself how do you keep your faith alive on the road and how do you keep that nourishing and speaking into others lives yeah yeah um, that I mean so many different things it's really not any different for us than it is for for anyone else um, you know just constant fellowship with other believers um, you know and accountability in that uh, sometimes I do travel alone just me you know and my Jetta, but most of the time I travel with other bands. Um, I get to hop in with all these other rock and roll bands, and, and it's fun getting to know these guys, but but so many of these guys out there are just awesome dudes, and so there's a lot of accountability there. Um, I'd say the most vital thing is just a daily walk with the Lord, you know? Um, daily time in the Word and daily prayer. Uh, you gotta roll out of bed, or most of the time you're sleeping bag on the floor, and uh, you know, and just, just submit your mind and your body to Christ, you know, and remember that yeah, you're traveling and you're getting to do great things and, and see people and, and meet people and, and but but ultimately, you know, we do it for the name of Christ, for the name of Jesus and, and uh, so it's just a daily a daily focus thing, step by step. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, is there any last things that you wanna let people know or the people that are watching this? Um yeah, life life is too short not to live passionately. And uh, uh, you know, I don't want to go up here and like give you like a gym coach speech. Like, go get them, but but uh, but genuinely, I think that uh, we we're constantly fed that we need to attain or be this or that um, in order to have value, to wear this or to drive that car, in order to be significant in life or to be happy or fulfilled. And, and the truth is, that's just that's just a bottomless pit that you'll just keep throwing things down that hole, and it's just never going to fill up. Um, and the only way you know to truly feel fulfilled in life is is relationship with Jesus Christ that's that's the only thing that can do it um, and he wants to see us live happy passionate lives and he's given every person on earth he designed with intention and and precision and, and he knows every hair on your head and you're beautiful and he's a plan for you awesome yeah awesome well we appreciate you coming out tonight and, man uh, thank you so much for having me and we appreciate, appreciate you leading worship too oh, for pleasure. the Campus Crusade meeting that uh, happened before the concert so it's great, and uh, a lot of people, I think, enjoyed you. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, definitely, we want to have you back again sometime. Thanks, man. I'd love to come back. And uh, so be sure to check out Sean Lee at seanlee.com. Yeah. Remember, that's S-E-A-N-L-E-A.com. So, uh, and then be sure to check out the Ratings Effect interview. Yep. And uh, they're at theratingseffect.com. Lift
it high This grateful heart is yours, not mine Be my design